Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple moving platform without the need to write any code. Also at the time of the recording it's actually Christmas for me so Merry Christmas. Now it might be late for some of you since it might be the next day already but hopefully you all had a wonderful Christmas. Anyway with that said let's jump right into this video. So as you can see here, we're going to be doing this for a 3D game. Now you don't have to worry if you want to do this for a 2D game since the process is the exact same. So we want to start by adding a new scene and since it's a 3D game, we're going to add a 3D scene. If it's a 2D game, then you want to do 2D scene instead. Anyway, go ahead and add your 3D scene, which is just a spatial. And then we're just going to go ahead and rename it to moving platform, like so. Then, with the moving platform selected, we want to go ahead and add a child to it, which is going to be a kinematic body. If you're doing a 2D game, you want to use the 2D node, so a kinematic body 2D. Since we're doing a 3D game, we're just going to use a kinematic body. So go ahead and add it, and then as a child of the kinematic body, we want to go ahead and add a mesh instance. So if you're doing a 2D game, that would be a sprite. Anyway, as another child of the kinematic body, we want to add a collision shape. And we could select the mesh instance and do mesh, but we're going to actually go to the inspector and first set up the mesh. So mesh empty, and then we're going to click on new cube mesh, and then click on the mesh once more. And then we're going to give it an X size of 4, a Y size of 0.5, and a Z size of 4. That should be good for our purposes. You could resize it to meet your purposes though. Anyway, like I said, you could use mesh and then give it the collision shape that way, but we're just going to manually do it. So with the collision shape selected, click on the empty, and then we're just using a box shape. The extents need to be half of what we're using for the size, so X2, Y.5, and then Z2. And I actually think the Y was actually a size of 0.5, so we want half of that. So it should be 0.25 if we want it to be the correct size. So there we go, it looks like it's the exact same size, and yeah, that looks good to me. Now with the moving platform selected, we want to go ahead and add a path node as a child of it, if I can actually spell. So go ahead and add it, and then with the path node still selected, we want to add a path follow node. And like I said, for 2D, you want to use the 2D, 2D versions. With the path follow node we selected, we want to go ahead and add a remote transform as a child of it. And then we have one last thing we need to add. So for the moving platform, we want to add a animation player as a child of it. And that should actually do it for the setup. Now with the path selected, we can actually define a path for our uh, platform to follow. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and actually go ahead and turn on snapping. And you can just do it by clicking this button or using the shortcut Y. And then to add points for our path, we click on the plus button there and then we can start adding points to our grid here. So let's zoom out a little bit and let's add a point here and that should be good. So you can actually adjust the points though if you want, like so, just by clicking and dragging. Uh, but this should work. Uh, let me actually make sure that the second pa the second point is actually directly on the grid. And yep, uh, there we go. It, it's on the grid so everything looks good to me. So with that, if we actually select the path follow now, if we adjust the offset, you can see that the path follow actually moves along the path we define. But we're actually going to be using the unit offset since it's easier to use since it's a value of 0 to 1. So uh, as you can see, the platform isn't actually moving. To move the platform, that's where the remote transform comes in you know comes in so we want to go into inspector remote path assign and then we assign the kinematic body to it and as you see the platform mesh actually moved to the uh, to follow the path follow node so now if we move the unit offset it will actually move the platform mesh so there we go now we can actually create the animation to move the platform so click on animation new and then name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna call it move underscore platform. And then I'm gonna give it a duration of four seconds, I think should be good. So yeah, let's set it to four seconds for now. We can adjust it if we need to. And then at zero, we wanna select the path follow 
And then in the inspector for the unit offset, we want to click on the key icon and then click create here to create the keyframe. Now at two seconds, we want to change the unit offset to one and keyframe that. So that's pretty much all we need for the actual animation now. So we're going to actually start this uh, to autoplay by clicking that button there and then looping by clicking that other button. Now if we click play, as you can see, our platform actually continues moving. So like I said, if you want to adjust the duration or the speed of the animation, you can change the duration directly for the animation player, or you can go into the inspector, play back options and change the speed. So if I want it half speed, I changed it to 0.5 and now it's, you know, half the speed it was before. And I'm actually going to use the speed option because we only have one animation for this platform and it's only affecting this one platform. So with that, we can actually go into our game and add the platform. So I'm actually going to start by actually selecting my main node and adding an empty normal node which I'm going to use as a container for my moving platforms. This is something that I like doing just to keep things a lot more organized, but you don't have to do this if you don't want. I just renamed it to moving platforms and apparently we forgot to actually save the moving platform. So go to the moving platform scene and save it. I'm going to save it uh, all lowercase and use this naming convention, but you can use whatever name you want and whatever naming convention you want. So just make sure you save it, go back to your level or your world. And then in this case, I'm going to, like I said, add them as a child of my moving platforms container that I'm going to be making use. Click on the instance button to instance in the platform. So once you click that option, uh, this menu is going to open up where you can select the scene that you want to instance in. So in this case, it's the moving platform. So there we go. We actually added our moving platform to our world and we're just going to move it here for now. And then we're going to do control D to duplicate it. And then we're just going to rotate it so that it faces the other direction like so. And it seems like they're actually underneath the ground. So I'm just going to move them up. So let's actually select both of them and then now move them up. And let me actually make them be farther apart from one another, like so. So let's move this one back and then this other one back. Uh, that looks good. And that's because, as you see here, the path was pretty much intersecting, so they would have collided. So let's just make sure that they have enough room where they won't collide. And there we go. Uh, so uh, now if we want to actually change the direction of the path, we can actually create multiple paths and then assign those different paths. For example, we want to move it up and down. We can create a path for that and then change the path we're using. But Or you could actually rotate it like I did uh, earlier. Or you can right click on the moving platform, click on edible children, and then select the path there. And before you actually adjust the path, you want to click on the curve drop down and then make it unique. That way, the, you, when you adjust the path of the platform, it doesn't affect all the other platforms. So those are the different ways you can actually adjust the path so that your platform can move in different directions. Uh, but anyway, let's actually test it out. So if we start the game, you will notice that they are moving, but there's one slight issue where our player doesn't actually stay on the platform. You kind of just slide off of it. So to fix that issue, we want to actually, that's an issue in the animation player. So let me actually get rid of edible children for this platform here and then go to the moving platform scene and then select the animation player. And then the option we need to adjust is under the playback options, the process mode, instead of idle, it needs to be set to physics. And I don't, so if you don't have a set to physics, as you saw, it just causes some weird issues. And also for the player, you wanna make sure that you're actually using the move and slide with snap function for the movement. And now with all that done, if we actually test the scene and start the game, as you can see, the moving platforms are moving and we actually, you know, stay on the platform. Um, and I don't know what happened there, but uh, as you see, it is actually working. So there you go. You have a moving working platform that worked without any code. So congratulations. So hopefully you found this video Video helpful and if you like the video like always uh, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing as we're on our way to 2,000 subscribers and it would definitely help the channel out anyway with all that said I will see you guys in the next one until then guys have a wonderful day